Hello, welcome to another video. And today we have a Smart Wi-Fi Outdoor Plug MSS620 by Meros. And uh, it works with uh, all the usual suspects here. Uh, Alexa, Google Assistant, and HomeKit. And uh, see a little information there. Um, yeah, let's open it up. So we're gonna go right through the whole setup process and, and see see how difficult this thing is to use. I'll give you a little user manual. Um, this is already probably more difficult than setting up that my previous review on one of these devices where everything was um, analog. So we got a little box, got a button. This gives you some warnings about uh, not exceeding the current. A little information about it on the back here. It has a ETL Intertech uh, safety listing. The plugs have little rubber seals on them so water doesn't get in there. They have little seals on the, the screw plugs. That's also to prevent you from getting inside uh, or water from getting inside specifically. So that's not necessarily a bad thing. Let's just see what we got in here. Phillips screws, so yeah, accessible. We'll uh, we'll do that later. First things first, we'll see if we can get it powered up. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in. So it's now on. We can see our power consumption is about 1.21 watts and it's trying to connect right now so this being a smart device uh, you have to use the user manual so it says uh, download the app I did that it's near a router and so I gotta go into the app Home kit, and we have to add a device. Um, I have, I'm going to use the plus button. I'm thinking that's what it is. I'm not sure. Add accessory, and we got to find a QR code. Looks like there's one there on the back. We will scan that. Add to home. It says this might take a minute. You can see the power consumption is really not changing at all over here. So we're around that 1.17 watts. And we got some blinking lights on there. Don't really know what they mean. It says give it a name. We're just going to say, uh, I'm going to create a new room. I'm just going to say outdoor post. Click continue. It's got two outlets. And click done. And supposedly, this is all set now. It's got a green light on there, so it says it's on. So I'm going to click this, and it's off. So you can see the power consumption here changes a lot when we do the this. So you can tell that this does not have a latching relay. So we click one on. You can see it goes up to 0.73 watts. Power factor gets a little bit better. Turn on both. And it goes up to the 1.15 watts. So we can turn them both off now. So that was actually pretty seamless. Let's go ahead and plug in a, a load here. And switch it on. And there it is. So you can see that these actually has two separate controlled outlets. And uh, with that, at least within the Apple ecosystem, this was uh, fairly painless. Yeah, basically the, the first set of instructions in here, which is basically download the app, uh, plug into a Wi-Fi router, and then just go to home and then add accessory or the plus. So it even says the plus watch is what I wasn't really sure about. And then, yeah, basically takes you through the rest of this right within the app. So you don't really have to, to think about it too much. So that seems to work pretty good. Let's open it up, see what's inside. If you're looking for some more content like this, 
uh, go ahead and check out my other timer review uh, right after this video. There's also going to be a little marker somewhere on the screen. And there it is. It's extremely simple. So we have two relays. These are controlling the outputs. You can see the neutral wire just bridges right straight through. The hot wire uh, comes in and gets switched by these two relays. These are 15 amp rated relays um, for 125 volt or 10 amp for 250, but that doesn't mean they can really uh, continuously switch um, that much safely. So that's why they rate this at 10 amps because um, they don't want to damage those contacts by trying to switch too much current. Uh, we see it's got a little fuse down there. So this is actually a buck chip right here. So that is a PN8036M33A2V16. And that little chip is actually a buck converter. So it's using one of these inductors here and it is actually creating a low voltage power supply for this circuit through this. So it is not a capacitive dropper. It is using a buck power supply to control. Um, so that's kind of a step up. You can see the power factor was still really low. Um, so it's not fantastic, but it is, um, it is efficient. So like we saw when we turn these two relays off, the power consumption dropped down to like 0.3 watts. And then we have just a little chip on there. Um, that's actually Maros branded on the outside and that's, uh, that's doing all the work. It's just a little, uh, Wi-Fi module. Um, basically everything is in there. So it's actually loaded up on the other side of the board too. So on this side of the board, we have a, a 15 amp mains fuse. So the power coming in goes through a 15 amp fuse before it goes anywhere else. So this is actually safety protected. It is a soldered on fuse, but it, at least there is a fuse. We can see it's got a relay control circuit here. So it's got just a transistor, uh, back EMF diode, and a couple of resistors. Um, so that's doing the switching for each of those. Our power supply uh, coming through over here. It looks like it is going through just a single diode over here. So this is half wave rectified. And then that's going through over here. This is the diode for switching. And it's got a couple of other smaller components over here uh, to support this chip in making a DC rail. And then we have a few real small components here. My guess is that that's just a voltage regulator. Uh, we've got another diode here and just some, some general support circuitry uh, or switch. And that's about it. So yeah, it's actually fairly complex. It uh, seems very well built. Um, the soldering, you can see they got a little bit of uh, flux residue from down here from where they did the manual soldering of the wires in. We got nice heavy duty traces. Um, this should be able to handle its rated power without any issue at all. Uh, we have um, two uh, one meg resistors going across that capacitor at the inlet. To, to drain that so that you don't have any uh, surprise shocks. Just to note, there is no rubber seal on this perimeter. This is just a, it's a plastic fit in, so it's not made to be submerged in water, but it certainly will do a pretty good job of uh, any glancing water that gets, uh, comes near it. All the screws are just um, self-tapper plastic. It's not made to be taken apart ever. Just a quick note about this device. It, does say in the user manual that if you're not on the same Wi-Fi network that you won't be able to access the device and I did verify that that does does actually happen. Plug it in. Put this in over here. So you can see our 0.32 watts. I'm gonna try pushing this button. So that actually turns it on. Push the button that turns it off. So I'm gonna push the button, turn it on. See, we're drawing a lot more watts now, but that's because I have a load connected. If we disconnect that, we'll see. So when we push that button, it does turn on both sockets. We're using about 1.17 watts to power two relays. That's really not bad. So we got to go on our phone and open up our plug. It says it's not responding, but uh, uh, well. <laughs> oh, there it goes. So it just took a couple seconds for that to get uh, linked up and now it's working. So now we can go ahead and turn one of those off. We can see this is about 0.73 watts to power one of these relays. So that's extremely close to uh, the non-smart 
uh, outdoor timer that I looked at. You can turn both off, you see the power consumption actually decreases quite a bit, it's a 0.32 watts. So this will actually use less power in idle versus other timers. So that's a good thing. And uh, yeah, that's not so bad. Power factor does come up a little bit when you have both of these on. Um, it is using a buck converter, like I said. So that's it, it's a fairly simple product. Um, seems to work really good for for being nice and uh, you know just a nice uh, phone controllable outdoor plug and I'm sure you can set up programs and things like that within the, the HomeKit app so I don't need to really go through that thanks for watching like and subscribe